All right, so uh, Golf Clash announced the new game set match tournament. Let's go check it out. It's going to be at uh, Greenwich Point, but if you use Golf Clash Notebook to uh, look at courses, there are some hole changes here. So let's go over the holes first. So hole number one is hole number one of Greenwich Point. Hole number two is hole number two of Greenwich Point. Hole number three is hole number seven, and that hole has changed. Hole number four is hole number four. Hole number five is hole number nine. Hole number six is hole number three. And that hole has also changed. Hole number seven, big par three. Hole number five. Hole number eight is hole number eight, and that one has also changed. And hole number nine of this tournament is hole number six of Greenwich Point, and that one has also changed. So let's go take a look at the holes. Hole number one. Da, 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 da. All right, this par three right here, there's there's actually a bunch of ways that you can go at this. There's also a rough bump that you can do right here. You find yourself, I, it's, you can do this rough bump with a katana, but if you get the wrong kind of win, a kingmaker will help you out because you can get, you, you have more room to maneuver. And if you get a headwind, you have room to work it out. Whereas with a katana, you can't do that. This hole right here is one of those holes that you're like on, you make an adjustments and it seems like you're constant. like for me in my game, I constantly chase it. I've made a lot of hole-in-ones on this, but this isn't a hole that, I don't know, it's it's tough. Especially when you're playing from the back tees, you're going to find yourself on the yellow line from the back tees quite a bit. There's ways that you can come at it. A Thor's hammer works really good on this hole from this side over here. I'm not a big fan of the white line or anything that involves me having to bounce over this sand. Why would I put that sand trap into play when I have multiple ways of coming at the hole where I don't have to put that sand trap into play. So I'm not a big fan, but I do see I've and I, I see a lot of people come at it where they're bouncing over the sand. We'll have to work on this as the week goes on. My notes say sniper, kingmaker, one per ring and try 15%. <clears throat> hole number two is hole number two. All right, our whole goal here is to get on in one, and the way to do that is the black line. Now, you can get up there in one on the white line. If you're using curl to try and bring yourself around, what you're really looking for, and, and Granite Point is a great teacher of how to use curl. If you're using the white line and you're trying to come at it, you got to think of where your first bounce is at, but your second bounce is, is what's important. Because if your second bounce is out in here and you're using curl, it, even if you're up in this area, I don't think that even with an extra mile nine, I don't think there's enough top spin to really get you. You're going to have to start down low coming in this direction where your second bounce is clear. And then you're going to have to gauge how much you how much curl you can put on it and still clear the rough up here where you're actually coming out. It's very easy to find yourself just laying up right here in front, and I this shot is is an excellent shot. It's flat ground all the way to the cap. Um, you got a very nice shot from out here, but if you want to get on in one, I think the black line is the most consistent way to do it. And if you use the right ball, and I've got on my notes, if you use a three power ball and you have any kind of helpful wind, tailwind, any wind that's side wind, even possibly a little bit of headwind. If you're using, if you've got a level five APOC and you've got that little bit of extra distance, you don't have to do any overpower. So if we get any headwind that makes us have to do any overpower, we might want to up it to a power four ball. But the whole goal is to get on in one. We have to get an eagle on this hole every time. I mean, there's too many people at the top of the bracket that got an eagle on this hole every time, and we have to be in that group. Otherwise, we're, we're never going to be able to work our way to the top. I mean, that's two strokes every round. Got to get this one done. On and one. And there are two ways to get up there and get your ego. But with the white line, I think you're going to find yourself having to do chips more often. But you may find yourself in an easier spot to get there. All right, hole number three. 
Actually, hole number three is hole number seven. Hold on, let's go to hole number seven. This hole right here and this hole has been changed. So take a look at it there. You can see, the, I think the big changes are down in this area where there's a finger out here now where, where people can bounce over. I don't really like, I think that the changes that they've made have made this hole easier for more people, but you can still have success on this hole doing the rough bump. And I do think the second shot is a little bit longer. So I think they lengthened it out, the hole out a little bit because they put that little fairway in there. So let's go look at it. It is this one right here, right here. And you can see how they've changed it down in this area down here. So before, you know, this was all rough in this area. So before, if you didn't get quite far enough out here or you didn't bring the right ball club combo, you could find your red line being right in this area. And it was, unless you brought a club with a lot of backspin, you really couldn't go over. But you were too, there was no fairway here. So you were too deep in the rough with your long iron typically is what it was. But now we have lots of different ways for people to go over there where they can bounce off of this platform, off of this platform to get over. But I still think the way to go at it is by doing a rough bump along this rough area. Now for a long, long time playing this hole, I always tried to get into like this area right here. I had a really nice straight shot. If you brought the right, if you brought the right ball with the sniper and sometimes it, I think it was a katana, your red line would be such that you could do, you were at minimum club. And you could take that shot right here with your wood. But I switched my shot up to an extra mile to get me out into this area. And trying to hit farther forward up into here. And it changed my angle to the cup and it also changed my distance. And even though that little bit of distance, it put me where I was always in my long iron and I could always do that rough bump. And anytime I can do that rough bump with a long iron versus a wood is much better. So doing the rough bump from right here. Now, the, a couple before they made the changes on this hole, and I haven't, I've only played this hole one time in a tournament, so I, I can't, I don't know if how much of a change they did on the green down here. But in the past, I've had a lot of success on this hole playing my long iron at one per ring, even though I may not be in that range and then playing a 15% wind adjustment. So I'm going to start there and then I'll, I'll move around. If I find that I start there and I'm way off, then I'm just going to go back to zero and then I'll, I'll try and establish it from, from that point. But uh, I'm going to start off here the very first time I play it just so that I have some kind of look at it. I do believe that there is an adjustment we're supposed to do on the drive as well. But it can't be much. A lot of holes I don't do an adjustment on the drive. There are a few. Especially when you're doing bounce to the bounce stuff. You really want to make sure you're on target. Hole number four is hole number four. All right. So, <clears throat> the white line of trying to get, I'm going to play the black line and I actually kind of play, a, I suppose you could think of it as a combo between the black and the white. I'm not trying to hit out here, but I'm not trying to go straight through here. So the white line's got your first landing spot as you're ending up out here and you're taking this shot into the cup and the black line from out here. I'm interested in landing my first bounce right there and then clearing this and coming up into this range. Now, if you bring a, a Kingmaker, you're typically gonna be somewhere in your short iron mid club. Depending on how much rollout you get, it could be a little bit better, it could be a little bit worse, minimum club. But if you bring out a bigger power ball, you can get up there where you are way in the hell up there and you're actually in your wedge range. Now in the past on this hole, and I didn't write it down, but it seemed like we were doing like a 10 or a 15% adjustment. And you're gonna see a lot of people play, and especially if you've got lower developed clubs. And, and really, you can still play this shot with lower developed clubs. It's all gonna be ball dependent. 
and you can get yourself out into this area and from out here you don't really need a lot of backspin I used to play this shot from out here with a lot of backspin but you don't need as much backspin um, and I don't know if that's because they've changed something on the green or if, if we just play it a little bit different now you'll see a lot of people play to the white line or excuse me the yellow line getting your first bounce here and coming over. What you want to make sure you watch out for if you're playing the yellow line is if you draw the line to the cup, so here's the flagpole, and you try and, and you draw a, a line out to that tip, obviously the closer you can get to the tip, the farther out to the left you are, the more you can kind of open up this fairway and get right out so that when you're coming to the cup, you've got a pretty straight shot at it. But you're going to find yourself landing out here where the yellow is and it's better to just shoot it out there you got to watch your second bounce once again because your first bounce is here and your second bounce will be right here and you put just a little bit of curl on it to try and bring yourself out into this area it's very easy because the fairway gets longer on the left hand side it's very easy when you swing it over to clip that rough and you just bleed out right here you can easily make it on with a wood but the deal is is that you lost a ton of distance and while this would be nice, this is more important, just to land in the fairway. But I'm going to be playing this white-black line where I'm landing here, trying to get my ball to come up, and I really want to be right in this area right here. Really close. I'm going to try and give myself every opportunity on that. That's another hole right there. I think this is a, this is a par 4 that a lot of people are going to get. And I think the people that are super successful during the week are going to be the ones that they hit it both times. But I think the majority of the bracket, this might be on every other round, every other side hole. Where they do pick it up at least once in a round. Hole number five is hole number nine. And hole number nine is different. Is, is it different? No, it is not different. So hole number nine... <clears throat> There's actually three ways you can play. There's four ways that you can play this. You're going to, and, and I think that the majority of the people that I see that come on here are definitely playing these two lines, but the white line has become pretty popular. And the deal is, is that, that there is a fine line between being in the white line and the black line. So if you over hit just a little bit, you're going to be to the point where you won't have any lanes through these trees. And you'll have to take the, bl the blind curl shot around these trees. You won't be able to see your ball guide coming out on the fairway. So you'll have to take a blind curl shot to bring your ball around. The good news on the fairway is, is or the green, is the flagpole. Here's the green. And the flagpole's way down here. And it is all downhill to the flagpole. So if you can touch the putting surface, you're more than likely going to end up, especially if you're high, you're going to end up floating down and be fairly close to the cup. Now, the white line hitting through the trees, you, like if we talk about Alby here, in my opinion, I have made several Albies doing this blind curl shot because I love this course. And when it first, when we first started playing um, and this hole came out, I played it a lot from the black line. And I'm not sure if they opened up these trees because it doesn't seem like there was as big a shot through the trees as there is now. But uh, if you're on this line, you do have a shot at Alby from, from here. The problem that I have hitting through trees like that is you, re you really need to either... Sometimes you're in the trees where you can hit that great to the left or the right and you'll be fine. But this is one of those ones where, depending on how you set it up or where you landed your angle through the trees, it's, it, you only can hit perfect. And this shot right here is... It, it gives you a better Albi shot than the black line. That's all I can say about it. But there is another way to go at it. You can do a, come down here and do a max overpower hook and try and get yourself up into this area so you can clear. What I found when I was trying this, practicing this shot, was that I ended up out here in front of the trees more often than not. And it actually, I was able to get up by curling it around, but I didn't really have a shot at it. I would have been better off on the white line. But I think it's possible that you could work that shot out so that you ended up, depending on what club ball combo you brought. One with lots of side spin, one with lots of top spin. I'm going to take a different shot, which goes off of this island right here. 
with whatever wood you have or driver you have that's got the most top spin. If you use a big topper, which you could, you'll just have to use a really big ball in order to reach that fairway. You may have to use a power five ball, whereas if you use an extra mile, if you've got an eight or a nine, um, or you've got a ball with extra top spin, you could use a power three ball. And try and bleed myself right out here, and you have a beautiful long iron, sh long iron shot to the cup that is definitely uphill. I mean, you are definitely going up the hill to the to the cup. So we have a killer, killer shot right here of getting Albie. And I have, and the deal is, is if you've got a Nirvana and a Spitfire in your bag, if you've got a Spitfire, you can make it from the sand here. And a Nirvana, you can make it from the rough here. If you fail up in this area, you're pretty well screwed. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Hole number six is hole number three. And this hole is also, this hole is different. So this used to be pure racetrack with a shot to the to the right and now it is this hole right here is this the one this is the one i kind of liked it better before now there still is a i believe that there is still a little bit of a racetrack side that you can do where you can try and come at it from the left but the last time we were here, we explored several shots. One of my teammates was, and I went back and watched the video, and I, I set up a playlist for this video. And don't look, just, you can go into the playlist. I'll put this video at the top of the playlist. And if you're watching this, just, you can play through the videos. Don't look at the names because you'll, you can get confused because it came from two different tournaments, a winter major and the Highland tournament for these newer holes. So what was happening was what was what was happening you see is getting into this area right here where your white ring was right off of the transition I mean right on the transition between those and also down here at the bottom I noticed in the shot that when I set it up I was off them just a little bit and what I could have done I I overshot the hole by, it, it wasn't rolling too fast when it went past it, but I, I did have a little bit of where the ball guide wasn't giving me the full information. It rolled out a little bit more. And I could have moved it a little bit to the left and had a, the perfect white ring off, white ring off. And it took very little adjustment. It took the, I think it took the three side spin and I'm not, where's my notes here? I have to see what the what that is on it, but it seemed like it took very very little, very little. I'm not sure about this hole. I've only played it only played it in the Highland tournament. That's the only time we I've played those holes. Hole number seven. What is hole number seven? Hole number seven is hole number five. Sorry about that. All right. So this racetrack hole has not changed, and. There are two shots that you can take on this hole. You can take the racetrack shot where we're taking the black line and trying to bring it as far along the top as you can before it drops down so that it'll drop down towards the cup. If you get caught up, typically if you get caught up and you enter like somewhere below that line, you're going to end up coming down, bleeding down towards the cup, but you'll be, you'll be off or short right to the right. You can also take a rough bump here, or you can start off on the on the course if you bring the right if you bring a club that's got backspin. But there is a rough bump that you can do here, and I, and I, the last time we played this hole, I actually was was working on the rough bump. I decided I didn't want to do the racetrack shot anymore. I wanted to do the rough bump, and so that's what I was working on on it. And I was using a rock and a katana. I was doing two right hand side spin, one top spin plus ten percent. That's where I left off the last time, and I was getting really close. It is a little scary, though, because because of these trees. This is, once again, this is one of those spots where if you set it up, I tried to set this shot up where I was. I could catch a great to the left or the right and still be able to clear through the gap on the trees. These racetrack holes are, I'm just, I'm, I'm just sick of that shot to the, the, on the black line. So I'm just trying something different on it. It's always 
too much of a crapshoot. I've got, I've made hole in ones on this, but it's just uh, one of those deals. Hole number eight is hole number eight, and that has also changed. So this hole is no longer like that. Let's go check it out. It's this hole right here. <clears throat> now it seemed like the way that we were doing it is coming into this area right here using this area. So if you had an extra mile apocalypse power three ball, From the T box. Let's see if we can get. In, let's see if we can get it. Hey, hey, you work for me. You can see where the T boxes are back here, right in this area. So we're coming from here, and the green is is up in this area right here. So we draw a line to the green going up to it. We're pretty close. On this so when I, I like to set up shots where I have a couple rings of separation so in order to give myself a couple rings of separation on this shot to get out here then that puts my ball guide right along that transition between the rough and the fairway and so you'll have to use a little bit of curl to bring it back into the fairway you have to lean so maybe like not necessarily half curl but pretty close This is where if you have a if you have a, a grid line and you've got on your ball guide down here, you can put a tick. You can establish, make that shot a few times and put a tick down there. Go back and watch your own video. This is one another reason why it's important to record your own video. You can go back and watch it and find out where to put that tick. Uh, this is this hole right here is low hanging fruit. We have to get this is another one of those holes. We've got two par fours in this tournament that we have to get. So that puts our minimum score at minus 14. And there's another one that we need to really kind of get one every other, at least once every other time. So our minimum score is like 14 and a half if we want to just keep up with the Joneses. So that puts you at 29. And we have lots of opportunities here. <clears throat> I do think that, like we just played in the nine hole cup and I think that the the par threes in Glen Monarch that we were playing there are much easier to hole in one than some of the par threes that are here, but uh, these par fours are critical. That's why if you can put yourself in a better position on any of those par fives to get an alba, you have to, you almost have to go for it. All right, hole number nine. This hole's also changed, and this is this is quite the two big holes that they changed. This par five right here and this par five right here the changes that they made in it one of the things that i really liked about glen monarch is that it it taught you a bunch of skills it taught you about curl it taught you blind curl it taught you how to take shots around trees where you really had no idea where you were going to go you were trying to judge that top spin back spin and you were going to do a max curl shot not overpower just a max curl shot it also taught you that distance, your landing spot is more important than distance. So, you know, we're not trying to get all the way out into an area before we would always hit out onto this island. And we weren't trying to get all the way to the other end because, bam, those trees are right in your way. So if you draw a line from the T to the edge of the trees and coming back, this is our zone right here. That's it. If we start getting outside of this zone, when we think about our arc, we start getting outside of our wood. We have to bring a wood that doesn't have as good a ball guide or has the right tools. And that's what these kind of courses taught you as players. But they've made these holes more playable. And this hole right here is a lot more playable than it was before. So what we can do now, we never, this this part down here used to just be for spectators. They had weddings and stuff, and whenever they had tournaments here, they had a big, they put bleachers and stuff up out here because nobody ever, ever played to the right-hand side. But now I'm going to be playing to the right-hand side. So I'm going to use a rock, a kingmaker, and a sniper. That's my bag. If I need anything other than that, I'm in deep, deep shit. 
I would definitely bring a sniper here because it'll help you far away and there's a lot of sand. It'll help. I want to, I would want to bring my biggest, longest hitting sand, sand club. Hey, itsy bitsy. Hold on one second. And the whole goal is to try and get out into this tip. So I'm going to set my shot up where I'm setting my shot up, up in this area right here with that Kingmakers. I'm going to give myself at least two and a half to three rings of separation between the rough and the fairway. <laughs> Damn dogs. So my ball guide's going to be going out in this direction. And then I'm going to bring it around over in this direction with curl. And if you've got a rock, that's one of the benefits. If you don't have an upper developed rock, like a maxed out rock, a QB will get the job done. You may have to bring out a bigger ball depending on the wind because a maxed out QB does get a little bit, it has, or excuse me, a rock has more distance. With my rock, I'm going to do two and a half topspin and no more. And that might be pushing it. I'm, yeah, I mean, that puts you real close up at the tip. Two and a half top spin, maximum left hand side spin, max curl. 356 yards in that range is what we're looking for. And then the shot to the cup. Now, we have several ways that you can go to the cup now from this angle because they put this little, they put this entire section in here. So we can now come up here and do a rough bump. We can. Or we can start off with our sniper from here and we can go straight to the cup. I'm doing the straight to the cup just because the angle on this rough bump is not normally my cup of tea. You're hitting it on the on the narrow part where if you hit anything bad to the left and the right, you're gonna end up in trouble. And there's no there's no it doesn't matter which way the wind's blowing. If you make a bad adjustment, you're in trouble. I see lots of opportunities on this course, and I really like this hole, and I like this hole from up here. I liked it from up here. I've made a lot of albies on this hole, even though from up here it's a very tough albie. So we'll have to see how it goes. All right, I put together a playlist, like I said, in uh, YouTube. Let's go. Hey, let's, let's, let's go into uh, my account. We'll go into playlists. Game, set, match. Got nine videos in there. I'll post this one and then I'll put it up. But uh, there's nine holes in order. In order for this tournament. Give you at least a look at them. And it includes video for the new holes. So you can see what they look like. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'll give you some bonus. We'll, we'll get some bonus content here. I think I have a... Uh, I think I have my uh, club card trading. Let's see if I get one of the five... Epics I'm looking for. I actually did the golden shot and got a couple apocalypses. Two. Castaway and Horizon. No dice. Put them in the bank. Save them for later. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Stay cool.